Hey guys, if you're looking at this, it is Tuesday. We are going to uh, the second lecture. Now, if you were paying attention yesterday, yes, I have the same clothes on in a different background. No, this is not the second day that I've worn these clothes. Uh, it got dark outside, so I had to come in to finish this lecture. So, before you ask, I'm not wearing two days of two day old clothes. Um, Tuesday, hopefully yesterday, um, y'all did the voter registration that I talked about. Uh, if you didn't do it, go ahead and go back and do it. It's open all week. Um, make sure you get that done. Uh, make sure you, you have a chance to vote in our election. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, um, how it goes, uh, how the nation votes and how Bowles votes. So, um, let's make sure everybody gets that done. Today, we're going to finish the notes on the Articles of Confederation. Uh, on your screen you can see this is where we left off, okay, through the weaknesses. So I'm going to cover the strengths, and there were some, and then we're going to go over the two most important pieces of legislation uh, that came out of that time in our nation, okay? Um, land Ordinance and the Northwest Ordinance. So, you should already have your notes out. Um, Hopefully yesterday y'all got caught up with any missing work you had, because um, there will be uh, an assignment that we start today, uh, some reading questions. So we'll start those today. Um, I do not expect you to finish them, and do not do them for homework. You have until tomorrow. Uh, you'll have class time tomorrow uh, to finish them up and ask questions or whatever. So don't... Uh, don't stress about getting those done today. Uh, in fact, I would prefer if you only did maybe half, quarter, okay? Uh, just, just get started on them, and then we'll finish them up tomorrow on Wednesday. So, <coughs> excuse me. We left off with two week, okay? The, the uh, articles are two week. There's not enough power in the central government. It's hard to get anything done. Um, Goodness, I dressed for the outside, now it's warm in here. Um, all these things that we talked about just didn't work out well. But there were some very, very positive things that came out of the articles. Uh, you know, it was kind of that stopgap that got us to the Constitution. Uh, and it also gave us some ideas of what works and what doesn't work. So when we built the Constitution uh, and designed our democratic republic, that hey, this, this should work better than the articles, okay? So we have some strengths, and let's talk about those strengths, okay? So the positive things that came out of the articles. Um, it was a necessary thing to have a government during the war. Um, all 13 colonies could not make decisions on their own, right? Uh, Virginia couldn't decide to do one thing and New York the other. Uh, you know that join or die flag in my room. I've referenced several referenced it several times. Uh, you know if they didn't come together, make decisions together, uh, they never would have had a chance to defeat the British. So the the articles served as a government during the war and after the war, um, and 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 kept us together, kept us going. Was it perfect? By no means. Uh, but it was good enough, right? Good enough at the time uh, to get us through that uh, that bad time that we were having, okay? Um, so that's one positive. You know, it, it, it filled a need. All right. um, another positive, all 13 states had equal power, right? So no one state was too powerful. No one state was not powerful enough. Um, that was also part of the issue, however. It's one of those good and bad things, kind of like Valley Forge, right? Terrible conditions, great training, right? Good and bad at Valley Forge. Well, the articles are the same way. All 13 states had equal power, which is good, right? Equality. But because of that, it was hard to get things done at the same time because it required unanimous votes. Okay, so everyone had to agree. So, um, one of those good and bad things, okay? Limited government, okay? Again, we fought against tyranny. With tyranny, tyranny, tyranny. Do not forget 
tyranny, okay? That's the whole reason we went to war. Uh, the tyrannical taxes, the tyrannical issues, all right? All these things that Great Britain was guilty of, we're not going to set up a government that does the same thing to us, okay? Um, but, but, again, um, this positive, this strength, this limited government, which prevents tyranny, also limits its effectiveness, okay? So no executive branch, uh, no national judicial branch uh, to prevent tyranny, but it's also harder to function. Mm -hmm. We have certain powers in the Articles of Confederation. Um, they are laid out specifically. If you read the articles, right, you will see that the power to declare war was in there. Uh, they gave the, the, uh, the Congress the power to sign treaties. Okay, that was in there. Uh, the articles gave the central government a power to raise an army and a navy. Didn't have any way to pay for it, but they could raise an army and a navy. Uh, they could print a national currency, but again, you can't just print money without having some sort of backing. So that was a limited, um, a limited strength at best. And they established the national postal system. Uh, you know, the, the video we watched, goodness gracious, it's been a while back, uh, Ben Franklin designed the, the postal system that spread the word of the Boston Massacre up and down the East Coast, right, up and down the 13 colonies through the correspondence riders, uh, the night riders. Um, that system is, is nationalized, okay, and made into the postal system, uh, similar to what we see today, uh, the United States Post Office. So that was a definitely definitely a positive uh, that came out of the articles. Um, that was the way information got passed, right? That was the only way people communicated back then was via letter, and it's important that the letter gets from point A to point B quickly, safely, cheaply, right? So that was a positive. Lastly, we have the Treaty of Paris, right? And they negotiated um, the Treaty of Paris which was the official end of the revolution, okay? Uh, we got recognition as a nation, we set our borders, right? Canada to the north, Florida to the south, obviously the Atlantic to the east because you can't go any farther, and the Mississippi to the west, okay? So that's what the treaty did. Um, the articles with that ability to sign those treaties, uh, they ended the war for all 13 colonies, 13 states now, Okay, so that was a positive. Now, they also passed two very important laws, which we're going to talk about next. Uh, the first one is the Land Ordinance of 1785. And the next one is the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. Um, the Land Ordinance is going to be a way to raise money and kind of divide, divide all the new land that we, we earned west of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, and the Northwest Ordinance is a process for setting up states, and it's going to be the first stab at um, limiting slavery uh, as we move toward true all men are created equal ideas. Uh, this is the first shot at uh, eliminating where slavery is possible. So let's talk about some more in depth about that. Um, the Land Ordinance, now I don't. We could talk days and days about this and what it actually did. Uh, I'm gonna give you three kind of little highlights here that we need to talk about. Um, if you don't understand, like, please tell me. We're gonna have an assignment on this. Uh, this is an important concept. So, hey, you watch this, you fill out your notes, you don't really know what I'm talking about, shoot me an email. I'll be glad to chat back and forth with you about it, okay? So, the land ordinance. This was the plan for selling and settling land that we won from Great Britain. Um, this was how the new nation was going to raise money, by selling national land uh, to farmers so they could, um, <coughs> excuse me, they could move west of the Appalachian Mountains, past where the proclamation line was. Uh, we're moving west, guys. We're moving towards our western border, so the area between the Mississippi River and the Appalachian Mountains. Um, this is a way to raise revenue, a way to raise revenue, uh, and it's also, it's got to be figured out how, how much, uh, how big, right? All these things have to be figured out, and that's what the land ordinance is going to do. Um, 
set up the system so that a settler could purchase a certain amount of land uh, in the undeveloped west, okay? Uh, west of the Appalachian Mountains, there's no, um, there's not much in the way of civilization, okay? You have some settlements along the Mississippi uh, that France had set up and Spain is part of that, right? Uh, you have the Native American populations out there, right, that live out there, but they're not uh, so much, you don't want to say civilized, but they're not designed uh, like the colonial settle governments and all that kind of stuff. So this is a way to set up uh, what is going to be new towns, eventually new states, okay, and, and how you're going to divide this part of the country uh, into new areas. Now this map, let me move my little face here because I'm in the way again. Uh, this map, it shows you exactly how they are going to start surveying and breaking down the new territory. Okay, so this is the Northwest Territory. Okay, you can see it in the map right here. Um, it's on your notes, so if it's hard to see on the slide or in the video, make sure you're looking at your notes. And this little green section is this cutout over here. All right, so each block is going to be surveyed. And they're going to look at whatever is in here and map it out. Okay, uh, each line is six miles so they're literally going to go six miles by six miles by six miles by six miles right at all of this six miles six miles six miles six miles in each of these six mile blocks you're going to have 36 little blocks okay each one a mile by a mile all right um, this is how they're going to break out what the new nation is going to look like what's going to be sold what is going to be held for certain things. Um, one section, like one of those boxes, one of these big boxes here, six miles by six miles, that is a square acre, okay? That's 640 acres, okay? One section, uh, no, excuse me, this section right here, my problem, my bad. Uh, this section right here, one mile by one mile is a, one square mile is 640 acres. Um, so as a farmer, say, hey, I'm gonna buy one section. Okay, I'm going to buy 640 acres. Well, what if you don't have the money for that? How about a half section down here in A, right? So a half section would be 320 acres. Or you go to a quarter, which is 180, right? Or a half quarter, right? Or an eighth, right? You can break it down, break it down, break it down, and buy smaller pieces, bigger pieces, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you'll notice the darker sections here. Okay, those were reserved for different things. One was for the federal government, one was for university, uh, schools, okay, townships. These townships that they designed, this is how they broke each one of them out. Okay, so these townships. Uh, every six miles you have this option township 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 uh, and that's how they're gonna break out the new Northwest Territory okay uh, imagine the process though you know it took a hot minute to to, to survey six acres by six or six miles by six miles uh, on foot right by hand they didn't have the satellites that we have now they didn't have all that information they had literally strings and binoculars Okay, and so, and so teams go out and they start surveying our new nation. Well, that tells us where things are. Uh, that, that gives us a system, an organized system, uh, for what's eventually going to be new states, new counties, new cities, all that kind of stuff. Okay? So that is the land ordinance. Let's talk about the Northwest Ordinance. Uh, so a couple years later, 1787, here comes the Northwest Ordinance. More and more people have bought farmland. More and more people are moving out west. The, the country is growing beyond the original 13 colonies. So those people living out there, but you know, what are we gonna call that? Is that, is that gonna be automatically be a state? Uh, yeah, we're calling it a territory right now. Is there a process where it becomes a state as we grow, as more people get out there? Uh, where, you know, representation was a huge thing for us. Uh, are they going to have representation in Congress? 
Are they gonna have a voice? Do they live too far out? Uh, you know, all these questions need to be answered. Uh, so they came up with the Northwest Ordinance, and what that was, uh, it was a process to form new states. Okay, um, not just a process, but an orderly process, orderly growth. Okay, um, not willy nilly, uh, not not just let's put a state here, or let's put a state here, and it's gonna look like this or that, or you know, let's draw a circle here. No, 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 it's going to be orderly, it's going to be organized, uh, it's going to be well-defined, uh, and it's going to have um, rules and regulations and milestones that have to be hit before they achieve statehood, okay? They're also going to do this very important thing, they're going to ban slavery in the Northwest Territory. Um, so, yeah, slavery is legal in all 13 of the original states at the moment, uh, but all new territories, slavery is banned, okay? So... So, you know, people like Phyllis Wheatley, who planted the seeds of abolition, uh, we're seeing that come to fruition, right? We're seeing the idea grow that, hey, we're not going to allow slavery over here. I get it. We still have it here, right? That's still part of our economy. That's still what, you know, the South is really based on that, their economic system. But out here, the new areas, the Northwest Territory, what we won from Great Britain, we're not going to allow slavery to continue in the new parts of the United States. All right, so eventually, uh, out of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, don't forget the dates, you're going to get these six states, okay? Uh, so out of the Northwest Territory, we're going we're gonna to have Ohio become a state, okay? It's in the map down there. Uh, Michigan is going to be a state. Indiana will eventually become a state. Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, okay? So those six states are what it was formed out of the Northwest Territory. Um, and it's not overnight, obviously. It's going to be a longer process. Um, and it's going to be um, one of those things where each state begins the process at different times, uh, gets there faster than some, slower than others, right? Um, but eventually, those six are what we're going to have. So let's talk about how those territories become states, okay? And you'll see the map here. Remember, I love maps. Uh, the Northwest Ordinance, uh, those are the final boundaries. You see those states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, um, how they're designed up against the Canadian border and along the Great Lakes. And you have Ohio and Indiana and Illinois down in the south. And then there's another cutout that shows you the townships, right, and the original ranges that were done. Uh, what one square mile is, 640 acres, right? Half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, lower, 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 okay? So, let's talk about statehood, all right? In the Northwest Ordinance, they're going to lay out some details. And the first one being um, that once a territory, let's start with Ohio, we'll stay with Ohio, how, how this works. Uh, once 5,000 free white males live in Ohio, they can start the process of applying for statehood. Um, the, the elephant in the room here, you had to be a freeman that didn't count um, anyone who was a slave. I remember slavery was banned up there, but that doesn't mean that some didn't get brought up there, okay? Uh, but they did not count towards this. Um, women and children did not count toward this number. Free white males. 5,000 or more free white males had to live in the territory before they could uh, start the process for statehood. Once they hit that number, they had to do two things. Uh, they could form a bicameral legislature and self-govern the territory. Bicameral. What is bicameral? Well, B-I, bi, stands for two two houses. We, as the United States now, have a bicameral legislature, the Senate and the House. Two houses of government, or two Congress, or right, Congress is made up of two seats, right? Senate, House, bicameral. Okay, so the states had to set up a bicameral legislature. Representatives, senators, however they wanted to break it up, but it had to be two, two houses, okay? 
Uh, once they did that, they could send a delegation to the U.S. Congress. So they could have a bit of a voice in Congress. Uh, they could petition for things that the state or well, the territory needed. Um, they could talk about their legislature. They could bring issues up to the Congress, things that might need to be helped back there, right? Um, and this is going to go on for a while. You've hit that 5,000 free Y mail mark, um, but we're not a state yet, okay? Uh, we're self-governing. We have a voice in the national level, but we're not to the state yet. So time goes on. More people buy into the, uh, the land ordinance, right? They're buying acreage. They're moving to the new territory. They're setting up farms. They're setting up cities. Eventually, you have a population of at least 60,000 free white males. Okay, so that's the next big milestone that has to be reached. Uh, again, this is not women and children. This is not people of color. This is 60,000 free white males. Remember, guys, this is 1787, not 2020. The ideas that we know now were not something back then. Okay, we can't apply our knowledge now to what they did then. We just talk about what they did then. All right. So, 60,000 people live there. 60,000 free white males. Uh, at that point, you have a bicameral legislature. You have a delegated Congress. You hit the 60,000 milestone. Bam! We're going to apply for statehood. Our delegate is going to say, hey, Ohio is ready to become a state. Okay? Um, we're going to write and submit our state constitution, and we're going to send it to Congress, and Congress is either going to approve it or deny it. If Congress approves it and says, yes, that's acceptable, uh, that's in line with the, the rest of the 13 states, the originals, uh, that's in line with the American principles that we fought for, then you are approved, and upon approval, you officially enter the Union. The 13 states become 14, and then 15, right? On and on and on, until we hit 19 at this point. Um, and that is how we get to statehood. Remember those numbers. 5,000 free white males to begin the process, 60,000 free white males to actually apply for statehood, okay? Um, that should bring you to the end of your notes. That's gonna cover, we covered the background, we went through weaknesses yesterday, uh, we talked about the few strengths and now the two um, laws that came out that we talk about. Um, we got an assignment today, an assignment tomorrow. Um, we're gonna talk some election stuff. Might throw in a pop quiz or something, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but that's going to do it for today. So once you get finished with your notes, uh, click on the assignment, start the reading questions. It's going to use the online textbook. Don't finish it today. Just take a few minutes, look over it, get started, and then tomorrow we'll finish it. All right. Uh, that concludes this one. Uh, happy Tuesday, and I'll see you all Wednesday.